Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. A logarithm is just another way of representing an exponential graph. In fact, a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential. Um, this is basically the definition of a logarithm, and if we look at what it's actually saying, it might make a little bit more sense. So say I have a common log of, um, let's say, 1,000, and this is going to equal 3. Now, the reason is, if you recall, a log, when there's no base written here, it's understood to be 10. It's called a common log. This is saying that the log of 10 to the third power is equal to 3, because 1,000 equals 10 to the third. So all logarithm does is figure out what power you raise the base to, and that's what that function gives you back. So another example would be uh, log base um, 5 of the number 25. Since 5 gets raised to the second power, this entire logarithm will be equal to 2. 2 is the exponent you raise the base to to get back this 25. So for this reason, this statement is only true if and only if 5 raised to the second power is equal to 25. So it's a logarithm basically figures out what exponent you're raising the given base to to get the number inside of that function. For that reason, logarithms have a bunch of equivalent properties that exponents have. So for every exponent property we've talked about, logs have a corresponding log property. Um, if I have a product of two numbers inside of a log, that's the same as adding them adding the combination of those separate logs. If I have division of two numbers inside of a single log, I can write that as a subtraction of two different logs. And if I have a number raised to an exponent inside of a log, I can remove that exponent from the log as a product. So how would we use these? Well, we can expand logs using log properties. So for example, if I can expand and simplify in the following way for the first one, this is a product of 10 times x, so I could rewrite this as log of the given base, which is understood to be 10 when there's no base written there, log of 10, log base 10 of 10, plus log base 10 of x. Well, 10, this number we can simplify further, because since the base is 10, I raise 10 to the first power to get 10, so this entire log actually simplifies to just 1, using that definition of log, so this is really 1 plus log of x my first expression. If I expand my second one out, this is a division, so it's going to be a subtraction of two logs. So it's the first log minus the second log, and the first one is the numerator, which is 5. So this is log of 5 minus log of x squared. I have an exponent here, so I can use my exponent property to simplify that further. So this is log of 5 minus, and then the exponent will come out, 2 log of x. Now I don't know offhand what the exponent I would raise 10 to to get 5, so I can't simplify that number value any further, so I'm going to leave this exactly as it is. Then the last one, I have log base 4 of a product, so I'm going to deal with that product first. So this is log base 4 of 16, okay, so it's this base is a notation that's linked with that log, and it's of the number 16, and then it was a product, so it is plus log of the square root of x minus 1. Now, I can still simplify this quite a bit further. First, I'm going to look at this number, 16. Well, I know that 4 to the second power would give me 16, so this entire log expression, which gives me back that exponent, would just be 2, because 4 to the second would give me back this number, 16. And this radical I can rethink of as an exponent because the square root, sorry, the square root of x minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 to the 1 half power. So I can think of this as an exponent and take that exponent out of my log. So this will really be plus 1 half the log of x minus 1. And that is fully simplified. Now since I don't know what any of these values are for x, I wouldn't be able to simplify those logs any further anyway. One key thing to remember and not make the mistake, you might see the subtraction and think, oh, subtraction property, but no, no, no. It has to be a division with inside the log in order to separate that into a subtraction of two logs. There is no log property for subtraction inside the log. 
You can also use log properties to condense expressions. For example, if I wanted to use properties to make this into a quantity of a single log, so I'm condensing this using log properties, I see an addition here, so I know that's going to translate to a multiplication within a single log. So I have uh, my base here is E, because this is a natural log, and it will be the natural log of this entire product, which is x plus 2 times x minus 2. Okay, so I've condensed this entire expression into this log, and I have 4 times that being subtracted from the log of x. I'm going to rewrite this product. So this is natural log of x minus 4 times the natural log. This is a difference of two squares, so it will just become x squared minus 4 when I distribute that out. So I have a number outside of my log, so I'm going to bring that number in, but I'm going to leave the subtraction there. So I'm just bringing in the positive 4, and I'm leaving that operation of subtraction. So this will be x squared minus 4 to the fourth power, because I brought in that positive 4 as an exponent. Now it's a subtraction which translates to the division of a single log, so this will all be the natural log of x divided by x squared minus 4 to the fourth power. There is my single log that represents that exact same expression. Notice that if you take it one step at a time, it's, all, it's not all that complicated. Multiplication, uh, addition is multiplication inside of a single log. I brought my number value in as an exponent, and I left my minus here because I know that would mean subtraction. So I have this minus this would be the division within a single log. Now I want to point out one common error about these log properties. This is a common mistake that I've seen uh, students make. You see the subtraction, you know it's a division, but they set up the division as the division of two logs. That is not the same thing. This would be the division of those two numbers inside that single log. So that's 32 over 16, which reduces to log base 2. 32 over 16 is just 2, and 2 raised to the first power would give me 2, so this whole expression is just 1. Don't make this mistake. When you see subtraction or addition of two logs, it becomes just one logarithm of that division or multiplication. That's how it translates. It does not translate into the division of two separate logs. Each of these properties, if using is condensed, the addition of two logs is the multiplication within a single log. The subtraction of two logs is the division within a single log. So don't make that mistake. The second one, uh, if I'm reducing it, again, I have two coefficients, so I'm going to bring those both in as exponents. So this will be natural log of 64 to the 1 half power plus natural log of x minus 4 to the fifth power. Well, recall that 1 half power is just the square root. The square root of 64 is 8, so I can actually reduce that stuff inside of that log plus natural log of x minus 4 to the fifth. I'm not going to expand this out. There's no real point to do that. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I see multiplication. So recall, the addition of two logs is going to become a single logarithm of this product, which is 8 times x minus 4. That's a minus. 4 to the fifth power. That's my expression as a single log. Okay. Now, one other property logs is the inverse property, which actually gives us a method for solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Um, whenever we solve an equation, we basically apply the inverse operations um, to each part as we expand through it. So, for example, here is log base 5 of 3x. So this is all one term. Log base 5 of the value 3x is all one term times 2 equals 4. Well, if I want to isolate this log term, the first thing I can do is divide by 2. And I'll end up with log base 5 of 3x is equal to 2. And if I want to get rid of this log stuff to get my x by itself, I can use this inverse property. Since the base is 5 here, I'm going to exponentiate this equation by raising 5 to each of these individual powers. Well, 5 raised to the log base 5 are inverse operations. They will cancel out and leave me with 3x. And then I have 5 squared, which is 25. 
Lastly, I'll divide both sides by 3, and I get 25 thirds is the value for x. Next equation, I have e raised to this entire power equals 11. So if I need to get this stuff out of my exponent, I can use a log. And in particular, I'm going to use the natural log, the one that has a base of e. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation because the natural log is the inverse operation of e to something, the exponential e. Well, since these are inverse operations, it will just give me back 2x minus 1 equals the natural log of 11. So continue to solve for x, add 1 to both sides, and divide by 2, and I'll get x is the natural log of 11 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay. Lastly, this expression, well, notice I have, it's impossible for me to isolate these two logs while they're separated, but I can use log properties to combine them. So if you ever have more than one log, you can use log properties to combine them into a single logarithm. So since this is addition, it will translate to multiplication, and this will become the log of the first one, 5x, times the second one, x minus 1 will equal 2. And if I want to solve this out, I need to get rid of this log so I can solve this equation. And I can do that since this base is 10. I can exponentiate both sides, which means that I'm going to raise 10 to each of these powers. So 10 and the log will cancel out. So I'm raising 10 to the log of all this stuff. So all of this stuff is the exponent I'm raising this side to. And since these two things are inverses, I'm left with just 5x times x minus 1. And over here, I have 10 squared, but 10 squared is just 100. So rather than writing it as 10 squared, I'm going to write it as 100. Then this becomes a quadratic equation. 5x squared minus 5x minus 100 equals 0. I have a common factor of 5 that I'm going to divide by, and I'm left with x squared minus x um, minus 20 equals 0, which factors to x minus 5, x plus 4 equals 0, which tells me that either x equals 5 or x equals negative 4. The last thing I should do with that is just check it in my expression up here. The only problem I get is with the negative 4, because when I plug in negative 4 to my original equation, this evaluates to log of negative 20. And the domain of my log expression is for all values greater than 0. That's not writing. Greater than 0. So since this is less than 0, that's not going to work. That value will not exist. So I'm going to reject this negative 4 as a possible value, which leaves me only with x equals 5 as my possible answer.